A lot of off-season work. Mm. We've seen the videos. We've seen the photos. What is, is driving you so far? Um, mostly just live up to what I know I'm capable of and just complete the goals that I want to this year. And just um, basically um, the people that believe in me prove them right and they're really not focusing on people who don't believe in me. Everybody, everybody says they were surprised you were coming back this year. Mm. Why was everybody so surprised, including Coach Sweeney? I guess because um, he thought, like, I uh, had the year that I wanted, and he thought I was going to go to the next level. But that was an average year, in my opinion, and I didn't. I know what I have in the tank. I know what I can do. And so that's why he was so surprised. What's the phone call you made to, to the coach um, telling him you wanted to come back? You text through that, what that was like? Yeah, it wasn't a phone call. I went to his office. Um, oh, okay. But, yeah, it was – he was – um. He was very surprised, like he said, and he was very happy, of course. But he he basically just um, said I was very mature of me and the things I wanted to do, and just told him my goals and my plans this year. And he was very happy about it. Excellent I'm guessing it, it's got to be night and day between the way you felt last year coming into the season and the way it seems like you feel right now, mm -hmm. as far as confidence, as far as your ability to do what you you've done all your life is that is that the case yeah for sure i mean last year i was coming off that terrible 20 year and it was overweight and things like that and now i'm just i have a whole different confidence level in regards to what i wanted to do and then basically i just know what everything that i need to do and everything planned out and just got to go and get it you say last year was an average year what do you see as an exceptional year for you this, um, year, this coming year i mean in my eyes i mean i have a whole a goal list i want to tell you all of them but yeah. Um, definitely a, a double digit sack year this year. Um, really, just it's a whole it's a whole different um, list about it. But that's my main thing. What are some of the differences that you see under Coach? You saw under Coach Venables mm -hmm. and Coach West. Now, um, what what are the what's kind of the difference and uh, are things a little bit different in, in any regard? I mean, I would say I mean West doesn't scream as much, or like he doesn't <laughs> he's not as vocal and he doesn't right. use verbal language as Coach V does. But the mindset doesn't change. I mean, everybody. The, the standard of defense, um, Coach V level is a great standard here. The voice keeps that going, and we all as players know what that standard looks like, so we all just keep that going. So nothing really changes in regards to the vocal standpoint. Mm -hmm. I guess you let, you let the team and quarterback pressures, though. So what what do you have to do or what do you have to improve in to make those pressure sacks, do you think? Um, really just um, just finishing at a, finishing the plays, really, I would say. Um, there was a lot of plays I, was, I, I feel like I, was, I left out there and really didn't finish it the way I wanted to. That's the reason it was just pressures and not sacks. So it's really, um, it's a lot of small details on it that I'm working on this year in regards to get off my hands and things like that. Everything, everything plays into plays into that. Mm -hmm. This was by Coach, Coach Eason and you know, his style and what kind of coach has he been? Yeah, I love Coach Eason. He brings a very um, professional, like just, I mean, he's play, he's coached at the next level, he's played at the next level. So he just, he brings that like professional, um, I don't really know the words to put it as, but he just, you, when he talks, you listen, basically. And he brings, his presence is very known and you really listen to him. He has a, a lot of advice and knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mind talking, does he? Oh, no, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. He's not shy at all. <laughs> I guess, was there any point during the season last year when you thought you were going to the NFL? I mean, did, or did you change your mind at any point? Or? Um, I would say the first half, I was my eyes was on it, but like the second half, um, I was getting to a point where I was kind of second guessing it and realized what I really wanted to do. And so that's the decision I made like towards the end of the season. Why were you second guessing it, do you think? Um, really just the, the goals I, I wanted to put out and a lot of people, not nobody has seen what I'm capable of and that's just what I really want to show this year. Did you get a grade? Did you get a grade for me? I mean, yeah, but all of that varies. I mean, they, nobody, a lot of people didn't know like, they thought I was going to run a 4-8 and come out or something like that. But people don't even know how fast I am. Like, I can bust out a 4-4 four, four out there, but they don't know that yet. <laughs> 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 Did that play a role, though, in your I wouldn't say – I wouldn't really focus on the grade because I know what I could do at the combine and, and, sh and showcase my talents. But it's mostly just, like, what I accomplished last season, and I want to accomplish a lot more. You mentioned the last two years, how they were tough. What was the low point for you during that, during that time? What, what year? The last couple of years, the mm -hmm. struggle, you know, just like the struggle, staying healthy and all that. What was the – What's the low point? That one, definitely that whole 20 year. I was just going through a lot of different things in regards to being overweight and being in my head a lot, a lot of different mental stuff I was going through. But um, I beat all that last year and overcome all that and really just on a clean slate now. I'm really just going to get my goals.
going back to that 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 year, mm-hmm. your team's out playing football games. They're on the road. You're you're home. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna play video game. What if you could go back now and tell that XT mm-hmm. of something? What would it be? Really, just um, believe in God, man. Because I had I was about to give up on football. I was about to just um, quit it and just let it go. And so really, just believe in God and talk to the people around me. There's great people in this. Like great people in my life, my family, my coaches. My teammates, they all just was encouraging me, man, just believing in them. And mainly, I mean, that's the main thing I was tell myself back then. Was there one person or maybe one event that kind of brought you out of that bad space and put you in a, in a good frame of mind? I wouldn't say a, a very specific event. I would say just, like, talking to a, a lot of different people, like my um, coach, Winnie, and my family and things like that. Those were the main people. Have you given up football? Where do you think you've been right now? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. To be honest with you, I really, I really don't know. Oh, I'm at 265 right now. I'm working down to 255, and once I get there, it's wraps. <laughs> well, you feel like you'll be able to do 255 you'll be able to do 265. You'll see. I mean, just <laughs> <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. I, I, I can't really put it in the words, but you'll see it yeah. for sure. How, how, what has the process been like finding that right balance for you? Mm-hmm. You know, of, of weight, speed, and all that. Yeah, it's mainly um mainly just nutrition and just getting my nutrition right. That's all discipline. I mean, all the working out stuff, that's going to be easy, but you can't, they always preach you can't out um, train a bad diet. So it's really just nutrition and being disciplined at night and things like that. So that's the main thing. But did you bulk up, I guess, too much, I guess, going into 20, just thinking that? Oh, I didn't bulk up. I got fat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting fat. I was just fat back then. I didn't bulk up. <laughs> but now your, your personal life has changed, you know, the engagement and all Mm-hmm. Has that played a role for you too? And that hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it right, the right way. Yeah, I mean, just growing up and just growing up in your head a lot and just maturing wise, everything, everything plays a factor. You know? How much did it play in your decision? Just the fact that you can come back and kind of do something special with, with the guys that you have across the defensive line. Oh, that made it a lot more easier. I mean, it just gives you that vision. Um, the 2018 D line that, that I um, was here with it just gives you that great vision of the guys that you got here. We can be one of the best ever to do it. What, what Avenger nickname did you, did you decide? Oh, I'm Thor. <laughs> yeah, Thor. I guess how do you decide what you are? If why you're Thor? Um, we really was we really was um everybody was trying to come up with their character. My, I mean Thor's one of my like favorite. I'm a huge Marvel fan, so like mm-hmm. Thor was just really easy for me to choose because he was like my favorite character. How did, how did Miles get Spider-Man today? Um, it kind of like because you know the the Black Spider-Man is Miles, so he just like <laughs> oh, kind of kind of went. There. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I what? Mean, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just, just, you know, obviously it's kind of a, a fun thing, but how much does that even just help with the camaraderie and the, the togetherness to do something like that? Oh, a lot. Just give us a vision, like, just give us our own identity because everybody was trying to, like, make us from back then, but really just give us our own identity and knowing that we can really be one of the best to ever do it here. I guess, um, so you're the huge Marvel guy. Were, were you kind of the impetus behind it, or, or, or the other guys, huge Marvel guys? Too? Um, we basically were just coming up with, like, what do we want to be besides the Power Rangers? So, <laughs> and me and KJ are, are a huge Marvel fan, so we really did the two that came up with the Avengers, and then everybody else just um, fell in and chose their character and things like that. Mm-hmm. Who's going to tell ever? Christian Wilkins that you guys aren't the Power Rangers? Hmm? Who's going to tell Christian Wilkins? Oh, I mean, he probably he probably would be happy, because if we chose the Power Rangers, he probably would have a lot to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was there ever consideration into going DC and Justice League, or is it always Marvel? No, nah, always Marvel. I, I never got into DC. I don't really know much about it, to be honest with you. I guess why is Thor your favorite? Um, I mean, before I, he was he was the strongest Avenger in my opinion before Captain Marvel, and then we found out why the and all this other stuff. But Thor is just always like the strongest guy in my eyes. Um, just being the son of Odinson, and I can get a lot into it. I don't want to. <laughs> Any of the younger guys in the defensive line that stood out so far to you? Oh yeah, I mean you got guys like um, young Kevin Swick and Greg Williams and things and Zaire Patterson. They all coming along and they're all just feeding off us and really just learning a lot and just really progressing a lot. This spring. Speaking of Kevin, how has he progressed um, from last year moving from linebacker over to there now? Oh a lot, man. It's, it's very inspirational to see because he didn't expect it. He came in thinking he was going to be a linebacker and they told him to move and he just. Dude, his mindset about it has just been very inspirational. I mean, just coming in and working, just putting his head down. Is there anything specific you kind of took him aside, say, hey, you can do this better or this, or maybe try this? Do you do that sometimes with a guy like that? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you tell them that because they're new to the position, so you tell them what their strengths are, and you can see what a guy can do and what he can't do. So you just you just give them advice there. How much did you and KJ talk to each other about the process and whether to come back? Or not? Did you, 
Was it independent? Or oh, it was definitely independent. KJ had no clue I was coming back. I kind of knew he was going to come back, but oh, my bad. <laughs> I kind of knew he was going to come back, but KJ had no clue I was coming back. I completely surprised him. What he didn't know. Reaction? Oh, he, he was kind of mad that I didn't tell him, but he, <laughs> he was happy. He was happy I was coming back. Was there a little bit of, I guess, fun in keeping that and seeing people and how surprised they were with you coming back? Oh, yeah, I mean, it was definitely um, fun. I mean, Coach Swinney had knew about a uh, he, he, he was the first person, it was like a week or two before uh, I actually made that announcement because he was going to start recruiting guys. I'm ain't, like not recruiting, but um, going into the board and stuff like that. I didn't want to replace me, so I had to let him know. And so he was the first guy to know. And then, of course, it's, I mean, it's always fun in regards to that fact. Was that hard keeping that a secret and making Coach Sweeney keep it a secret? Yeah, it was definitely hard. <laughs> um, I had to remind Coach Sweeney a few times so he went safe to the team <laughs> before we um, got to the bank and things like that. But. Yeah, it was definitely hard because I had people asking me every single day because I didn't make an announcement yet. So it was definitely difficult. I know you touched on a little bit earlier, but how integral and important would it be for having Coach Easton here to kind of provide you a roadmap to the NFL? You saying how is it? Like having him kind of show you the ins and outs of how to get to the NFL. Oh yeah, I mean he just gives you that um, insight of what the NFL is looking for and just basically every all the um, like you said the ins and outs of it, and it very makes it much easier, it makes the process much easier. What you need to work on. And what they're um, looking for in regards to off the field and all that, all those different factors. You're talking about keeping a good diet. I think last year we heard that sweets was the thing that was a problem yeah. for you. What, what, um, are you not eating, or what, are you, what are you eating to try to make yourself better there? It's really, um, I would say in regards to sweets, like I don't eat any more candy or anything like that. But in regards to like sweet drinks and things like that, I just do like crystallites, put it in my water just if I want to like taste something flavorful. That's like five calories. So it's just small things like that that plays a difference. And um, the diet and nutrition and things like that. Anybody else? Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. That was good.